Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to the very interesting game I just played last year and uh, long story short, um, I played with Eric online, uh, however it's very interesting uh, what just happened because he is one of my, you know, favorite YouTubers, actually the streamers, uh, but I watch his YouTube videos and I saw in one of them, uh, he said he's going to Bangkok and he would like to, you know, meet with some people, chess people and us, you know, Thailand um, as a country is the desert is a is a desert is there are there are no grandmasters in thailand no international masters um there are some filipinians indonesians grandmasters uh, and they stay in thailand however uh, thai just don't play chess okay there are some lower level uh players of course uh but definitely you know thai people are not you know the chess power uh comparing to filipinians where they have a lot of grandmasters indonesia of course china india all the countries around uh, even vietnam and um, and so on uh they have grandmasters even super grandmasters but thailand not um and Eric told, okay, I'm coming to the place where there are no, not, not many chess um, players. Um, and I asked uh, actually Eric, okay, I'm gonna show you the city uh, and we're gonna meet and play maybe some chess games. And to my surprise, Eric agreed. Uh, and it's, we spent about 12 hours on chess, believe me or not, we went to National Stadium Actually, Eric woke up very early. He arrived there, I think, eight o'clock, uh, and we spent, you know, a couple of hours there. There were some players, um, about, I think, 2000, that, that was the ranking. So they also enjoyed that. Uh, quite lucky day for them because normally they play with some kids who barely know the moves so that's the part of the program training or something so that was quite an quite an event for them and then i think we spent about 12 hours on playing chess uh with some breaks on the on the on the lunch on the dinner uh, and then later i show um eric the city and what he wanted to see i i spice up the things a bit and i show him the, the, the very nice, unusual site. And he enjoyed really much, so uh, so definitely good memories. At least he's saying that, uh, okay, he had a good time in Bangkok, so I'm very happy about that. Now, this game was played just a little bit before, one day before. So I wanted to make a good impression uh, before Eric, you know, uh, gonna meet with me. Uh, so I asked him to play the, the one game online and now luckily for me Eric was on the jet lag he just arrived to Bangkok he was in the Starbucks so he he didn't stay in his favorite chair he didn't drink his favorite you know tea um, like always on his stream so he didn't feel so comfortable like like normally uh, but keep in mind okay this is international master uh, and I haven't played for like 20 years uh, just you know couple of months of playing online a bit uh, and I was trying to prepare something so I got my old opening repertoire uh, and try to play one of the lines against Eric Rosen however I of course knew that he knows all the lines and he knows all the sharpest lines so I tried to find something different uh, from what I played before so here we go without further ado I hope uh, you can forgive me this introduction this was you know a very big day for me after you know so long break from chess I played against international master so also imagine that was almost heart attack for me it was um, it was very very exciting and if you ever played against the very very strong players some international masters grandmasters you know the feeling inside like you feel like what's gonna happen next and, and and you know every move gonna be strong so you know uh, in these conditions we played eric opened with e4 we had e6 i go for french defense i told okay let's play solid uh, but try to surprise eric um somehow we have d4 d5 and now what i prepared for example against exchange i didn't expect eric to play exchange but if he do um then i could go for some setup with the with the bishop on on d6 
uh, make the asymmetrical um, and then attack on the maybe maybe this way castle on the queen side and attack on the on the king side and at the same time white usually attack on the on the queen side and the games are very very sharp so that was one of the possibilities i also was thinking okay if he go for advanced variation i go for system b6 uh, and then I tried to exchange the bishop on a6 and after the game Eric actually asked me uh, if I play this uh, what would you do after c3 because there are tricks you know with the with the queen on a4 and I said okay uh, queen d7 this is what I usually play so definitely I was uh, quite well prepared here and now Eric of course I expected him to play something like knight c3 maybe knight d2 uh, and he, indeed he played knight d2 and now a knight f6 he played e5 uh, and here 97% of the games in the database knight f to d7 of course and there are a couple of games with knight g8 knight e4 and I went for knight e4 system and now why do I even play that these are you know definitely some shenanigans not really the best um, idea however it can be surprising and I was thinking okay uh, maybe I can play against international master probably he knows and he has some answers but okay let's let's check what uh, what he has here now if you don't know this this systems the easiest way to deal with that is actually bishop d3 uh, forcing to exchange these knights uh, and then get to the more traditional systems like knight c6 knight f3 and so on okay queen b6 and the game can continue black of course has the pressure on the center on the b2 uh, and there are a lot of lines here to to to, to check but they are very very similar like you know in the normal line so um that that's recommended uh eric went for the main line 9 e4 d takes on e4 and now white has uh, quite some moves the most solid is of course c3 bishop e3 can be played knight e2 can be played this is everything well known some uh, players try to deal with this uh, pawn immediately playing something like f3 but it's very very tricky as this queen you know uh, has some there are some traps here for example if the if this pawn takes um, then of course there are traps with the with the attack on the king and the rook so so it's pretty tricky um, a3 a3 is the most annoying system and it could be played however eric went for uh, also something uh, very very tricky bishop c4 uh, preparing d5 uh, quite immediately luckily for me i i know also the lines here so i played a6 preparing b5 uh, we had a4 and now b6 uh, as b5 is not possible and i want to bring the bishop to this diagonal and here eric actually said after we analyze uh, said probably he played d5 too early and indeed the main line is actually knight h3 and after bishop b7 this knight can stay on f4 very active place for the knight supporting um, d5 so uh, it's much easier to play not yet it's still not not ready and after knight c3 there are moves like bishop e3 c3 uh, and the game can continue but finally uh, white gonna push the pawn Eric went for immediate d5 move um, and now of course for me bishop b7 and now if you are French defense player uh, and you see okay d takes on e6 what is going on this you know completely shattered position uh, but it's still you know part of the theory so queen d1 exchanging the queens now white cannot castle so um, that's quite good thing for black of course and now after f takes on e6 bishop takes on e6 um, and knight c6 and here we have in the database two moves like um, bishop e3 both of them won by black so i didn't worry i i, I know the theory here uh, however eric went for bishop f4 so he defends e5 uh, and asked me okay what are you gonna do now and here okay i was on my own i i didn't know more moves here 
However, it's not, you know, very difficult to um, to see that I should go for something like bishop c5, maybe focus on this pawn, maybe bring the rook over here, uh, maybe later push this pawn if the bishop is moved, maybe push the pawn with this bishop on the diagonal. It looks pretty attractive. Also, I have the, you know, centralizing move that the rook can come to d8 and so on. So uh, this, this I could play. I found later in the book that there were some games played with the knight d4 attacking this bishop uh, and it's pretty tricky one because this bishop has to stay on one of these diagonals and which one to choose uh, if you go, for example, to bishop to g4, uh, it can be kicked from there. Uh, if you go here, then the problem is after rook d8, there are some tricky discoveries here. So king c1, now bishop c5, and look at this knight. And look at this rook. This knight cannot go uh, anywhere, so the position is pretty tricky, definitely very good for, for black. Um, and if you go for, I don't know, bishop c4, then bishop c5, White could try to kick the, the knight, but still, there are there are castle on the queen side, the king is completely safe here, uh, and this is pretty tricky, you even cannot take the, the knight because you're gonna lose this pawn, uh, and then the bishop, so probably king c1, uh, and the game can continue here, but definitely, okay, black has won, uh, black are pawned down, however, uh, the pieces are very, very active uh, and it shouldn't be a problem, you know, uh, with playing very, very actively. Uh, but I went for bishop c5 immediately. So I um, went after the f2 pawn. And now we have knight h3 defending uh, and here, of course, rook d8. And I expected Eric to go uh, for king c1, as I know in the, in the theory there are a lot of moves like this. Uh, king e1 was possible but not as, as as great as i can jump with the knight for example to d4 um, and this is already very annoying so king c1 is the only move however eric went for a much active move king e2 king e2 he connected the rooks um and you know he want to confront my rook but there is one problem with that move because this is a blunder and uh, i hope you see that already knight d4 so knight d4 i didn't play before and maybe that was a good decision uh knight d4 now uh, it's a, is a trick so the king couldn't go to e2 because of the um, uh, of the fork uh, we have king f1 and now i simply take the bishop so um you know why i have one extra piece but remember uh we don't have incrementation that was 10 minutes game we don't have incrementation and I play against international master after very long you know uh, period everything can happen if he managed to you know activate the pieces my plan is easy exchange all the pieces uh, and win with the one extra piece at the end we have c3 preparing b4 so uh, what Eric want to do is simply uh, you know kick my pieces to the less active squares and activate his pieces and try to get some advantage but as you see it's not not so easy my plan is easy bring the the, the pieces to the most active squares for example rook would want, want to go to d2 and exchange the pieces so what I have to do, it's, it's, it's pretty simple, knight f4, knight f4, and now rook to d2. We have b4, kicking the bishop, and now I said, okay, I, I don't care, <laughs> first uh, let's exchange even more pieces. So rook f2 with check, king e1, and now exchange, but this way. Uh, so of course Eric has to take, um, and now I castle. And uh, I'm gonna, you know, uh, put my rooks on the on the second rank um, and win from there. Uh, C takes on B6, C takes on B6, and now Rook B1 going after my pawn, and you know my my heart start to beat a bit. Like uh, okay, this is quite annoying. I cannot defend the pawn, and the rooks start to be quite active. So at least one of them. Uh, so I played e3, now trying to exchange this way, um, and now we have rook b6, bishop g2, so rook is under attack, rook g1, and now, of course, uh, I exchange the rooks, so we have rook f1, rook f1, uh, bishop takes f1, now I want to save at least that pawn, 
because you know if if Eric has these three points it can be it's it's still you know winning for me however it's you know it's international masters my my time is peaking I I think I have like two minutes on the clock and uh, it's still a lot I play a lot of bullets so no problem but you know in in this moment um, my I almost got the herd attack uh, and here uh, we have e6. So Eric still thinks about, you know, how to checkmate me um, in the last moment. He controls now f7. So if I move the rook um, anywhere, then of course the, the rook can come to b8, which is, uh, you know, uh, pretty tricky to the end. But here actually I, I could checkmate Eric with in, in three moves and it was quite forced. Bishop d3 was winning immediately. Um, and now checkmate in the next move is coming. The only way to, to prolong that is rook b8, pinning my, my rook, but of course in the, in the next move uh, we're gonna have a checkmate. So that was my chance, but actually after e6 I missed that and I played bishop c4 going after that pawn. And uh, and Eric started to run with the king, king d1, and I see, okay, I, I, I missed that, so bishop d3, but now it's too late, king c1, so Eric escaped with the king, but now uh, I have rook f1, king b2, uh, and now simply I win the rook. Uh, this was almost a checkmate here, as you see, however, luckily, uh, I had this, this tactic, so after king a3, rook b6, we had the e7, and after king f7, uh, I almost got the herd attack, but Eric Rosen uh, resigned. So that was my, my, my win, and according to Eric Rosen, he said uh, during a stream, one of the, one of the followers asked him, uh, if someone has the positive score against you, uh, and you have the positive score against Magnus Carlsen, does it mean that this person is the world champion, and Eric uh, confirmed. So I feel, you know, uh, as a world champion, as I have the positive score against uh, Eric Rosen, at least uh, in online chess, because, you know, later, day later, when we spent all day, of course, I lost all the games. It was uh, mostly, you know, a training games. So, so I also get a lot of, from that. Um, and, and yeah, I would like to, if Eric watching this, I would like to thank him uh, for whole day. That was huge fun. Uh, and I'm still very happy that I managed to win at least one game online. And, um, and yeah, I am this kind of the world champion. So if you like this video, if you enjoy, press like. Uh, if you don't like for some reason, press unlike. And of course, if you don't want to miss another videos on my channel, press subscribe, smash the bell button. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.